live from Seneca Falls. It's Healthy Cooking with your friendly Italians. I'm Jim Barrow. I'm Marilyn Barrow. And we're here to talk food, and we're here to talk about Italy, and uh, we're going to be traveling through Umbria and Pascara and Abruzzi, and we're going to talk about two special places there, uh, a, a place called Santa Altima, which is a church, and Singalunga, and we're going to give you recipes for smashed potatoes, steak or oregante, cipino, and panna cotta. So we're going to get started, but before we do, I want to send. Uh, we want to send our our prayers and our hearts that go out to our cousin Bobby DeSio and his wife. That's uh, and family. All right, are you ready to take out your aggression? and cook smashed potatoes. This is live now. Well, maybe. Now, well, I'm going to show you how to cook it. Yeah, Jim really likes this dish because he can get his aggression out. But yeah. it is a good dish. It's very, it's delicious. And Jim said a crop, he said he liked it too. So there we go. Here we go. You're in my kitchen, not a very big kitchen. I'm heating a pan. Uh, and now I'm going to drizzle some extra virgin olive oil into it. Let that heat up a bit. Now I've got uh, these potatoes that I have boiled, and I'm going to ah ah ah. So he likes ah. to do it with a pan, but yeah. you know you can do it with almost anything—a pounder or whatever. Right. You want to just break it open so you you see the whites of uh, of the potato. These have been boiled before. Yes, they've been boiled. These are red potatoes, small red potatoes. You could use uh, any smaller, smaller type of potato. You can use fingerlings. In the recipe, I've given we've given you names of different yeah. uh, small potatoes that you can use. All right, so we got them all. All I've taken all of my aggression out now. <laughs> uh, and now what I'm uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to open them up a bit with a fork so that uh, the next step, which is the olive oil, which has, this olive oil, I've cooked garlic. I've taken about four cloves of garlic and cooked it in olive oil. In this case, I'm just gonna drizzle some of that olive oil that uh, has got that uh, taste of garlic in it and drizzling that over the top. And just remember to do it as a light brown because if you burn garlic, it becomes very bitter. So you, yeah. just be careful with that. The, the garlic I've taken, I've, used, I've, I've cooked it very low, at a low, a low uh, heat, and now I put a little salt on it, and uh, the bottoms now have gotten a, gotten a little brown. Uh, I'm uh, going to now take salt and pepper and sprinkle it out over the top, and uh, they're, they're going to be going into the oven here shortly. The only other thing we're going to put on them is some wonderful Pecorino Romano. I'll sprinkle some of that over the top, a little on each one. Da -dun, da -dun, da -dun, da -dun. There it is. Mm. And we'll stick that right into the oven. And we'll leave them in there till they uh, get a little crisp and brown yeah. on, the, on the top. Yeah, you do want them brown. And you see I have my wine with me. I don't cook without wine. <laughs> it's very important. Red, white, as long as it's dry, I'm fine. Chop up some parsley. I washed that parsley, by the way, Marilyn. Good. I mean, we have to remind him every once in a while about these greens need washing, but uh, that's okay. Rough chop, <coughs> and uh, I got that going. I don't. I haven't cut off any fingers, which is a, mm -hmm. is, a is good. <coughs> now I'm sprinkling dried oregano over the top and that's right off it's still on the on the bush if you will and this is I, an easy way to use dried oregano and it's much much better and it tastes better right and i'm going to tell you where to get that i'm going to uh, a, 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 a very favorite place of mine a little salt little uh little pepper there you go and uh now we're going to have i'm that's a zester i have and i'm zesting the uh, the lemon rind uh, in, on top of it, trying to to just get the yellowness of it, and not the white. 
A zester has all kinds of usage for it. You can zest garlic. You can do all kinds of great things. Cheeses. Uh, it's, a, it's a great tool to have in your... I, I don't know what i do without it. So now uh, I'm also going to be adding some lemon juice. And uh, uh, Becky Holden gave me this little contraption Another right here. Another one of his favorite, favorite right. tools, though. This he is really so uses easy it. to get the juice out of a lemon. Yes. Just cut both ends, put it in there, squeeze... This is sort of aggressive move too. And you can uh, always squeeze it through your hand and catch the yeah. pits too. Right. If you don't have one of those. Of course then you gotta wash your hand. Oh, but lemon's good. Oh, okay. Alright. Got all that juice out of there. Now I'm gonna stick that chopped parsley uh, and uh, the lemon zest and the oregano. There is some uh, extra virgin olive oil. This the one I'm using here is Pompeian, uh, which is a Greek olive oil. Uh, I, I like Greek olive oil. I like Spanish olive oil. I like uh, uh, oil uh, uh, from Libya. That sounds crazy, but it's really, really good. Uh, and uh, got that all mixed together. The potatoes are now browned. Uh, and now I'll take uh, some of that... Uh, mixture of olive oil and uh, lemon juice and lemon uh, and oregano and I'm going to just uh, put a little dollop on each one of these. This is an easy, easy recipe to make. It can be made uh, ahead of time to the point uh, of putting it in the, uh, in the oven or the, and broiling. You can do that if you got company coming, you put that in and finish it off with uh, in the oven, broil it, and then put a little dollop on it. Now to make it, uh, to bring out some more colors in it, we're going to take some wonderful Greek yogurt. Plain yogurt. Plain Greek yogurt, and a little dollop of that on each one of those. If it wants to come off the spoon, there we go. And once that's on there, it's going to paint a pretty picture because you eat not only with your stomach, and your mouth, but you eat with your eyes, and this uh, gives it a little contrast of the, you have a little green and, uh, and white and the potatoes, and it's a really nice gist. It's a dish that uh, I think your children might like, uh, and uh, an easy gist to make. Uh, healthy, you know, there's a little butter in the thing, a little olive oil, but you can't cook without those, or I can't anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I'm going to Sprinkle, just again, to give it a little bit more effect, sprinkle a little paparica over the top. This is smoked pap paparica, which is a little bite to it, more so than uh, sweet. Regular, yeah, regular, sweet. Sweet. Pop, right. And there you go. It's a very pretty dish. Now, the most important part, you left out, <laughs> drink, drinking my wine. Ah. Right. Well, there it is. I hope you enjoyed uh, our little... Uh, right into our house and into our apartment and uh, our kitchen and uh, I enjoy doing it that way. All right, so now I want to talk about uh, uh, this place that I go up in Syracuse. We talked about that already. Right. All right. I want to talk about a place that I love. Maryland, Maryland won't even, won't even well, go Well, it's in very there. crowded. I'm not very good at very tight places so also I don't smell yes it's not my favorite place but, but Jim loves it I absolutely love it. it's called Shamir's it's on Genesee Street it's right across from the Syracuse stage and it has it's got great cheeses the, they have four or five different uh, types of feta one from Bulgaria one from Greece one from France that are great the prices are excellent they have barrels of olives that you can pick out, uh, the olives that you want. They have uh, pita bread that uh, uh, is the best pita bread I've tasted. Uh, the olive oils they have are from, they have Lebanese olive oil, French lemon oil, Greek lemon oil, uh, uh, olive oil. Got all kinds of olive oils there. Uh, it's, it's really, really a nice spot. They have fig jam. You ever had fig jam? It's wonderful. Or dates, wonderful dates. Well, it I, just depends on what kind of a shopper you are. That's right. all I can you, say. You you think I'm crazy? <laughs> I think. No, but that's okay. And he brings his he brings his fellow uh, uh, 
buddies up there every once in a while and they go shopping. So that's good. Then I don't have to go. <laughs> they also have Greek honey. And Greek honey, it's expensive, is the best honey that you can taste. It's wonderful honey. So uh, if you ever get up to Syracuse, Genesee Street, try it. I think you'll like it. And, and I take uh, 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 people up there, my buddies, and they have the barrels of olives, and they go and they eat the barrels. They don't pay for them. They can taste them, right. And they, uh, they eat a lot of olives. I don't know if they ever buy anything. Yeah, they do. I can't say they don't buy No, anything. that isn't true. Right. right. All right. Uh, Marilyn, next, I want to talk about a romantic lunch. Yes, in Italy. In Italy. Many years ago, though. Mm -hmm. Called Singal is in the town of Singalunga. Isn't that sound wonderful? Isn't that Singalunga. a beautiful sound? Singalunga. I like that and sound. It's a restaurant there called Locanda della Amorsa, which is love. Yes. And you drive up uh, this uh, tree line road to this. Uh, I think it was a convent. I'm not sure. It was. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful spot. Beautiful. An older building. Beautiful. It, it, the flowers and the, uh, the, um, the the whole uh, uh, landscaping of this place was absolutely beautiful. And uh, the maitre d is there to greet you when you come come in, and a beautiful setting. They've redone the whole place. I think it was the f one of the finest meals we've well, ever had. Well, it was, had. and I think one of the reasons it was so wonderful is that it was very local grown. I mean, they actually had gardens and had uh, had uh, produce right from, and their wine right from this place. So yeah. it was very local and very wonderful. So Jim is going to explain this yeah. wonderful dinner, which, wh or lunch, which was basically um, Vegetables. It's all vegetables. All vegetables. All vegetables. So vegetables. Veg vegetarian. And served with fresh flowers and crystal and china and so forth. Five course lunch. Roast pepper pate was the first course. Which was absolutely delicious. Then grilled fresh vegetables with a little basil on top. Then followed by the best tomato bread soup I've ever tasted we, in my life. I had never heard of tomato bread soup. Again, we're into the area where they have these, these breads that go stale very easily, so they use them in all kinds of ways. And this tomato bread soup was absolutely delicious. Of course, they were fresh tomatoes from the garden, too, so, yeah. you know, how can you beat this combination? <laughs> so. Then they sautéed some beans, and they put fresh mint over the top of it. Uh, they, we had a vegetable frittata, and we, uh, we drank the wines that they made right. there uh, locally. Great, great spot, and uh, a place that uh, we thoroughly enjoyed that one. So I wanted to share that with you. So now, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to give you a recipe for a steak oreganta. Is that the right way to pronounce it? I think so. All right. And it comes from a movie called The Big Night uh, that was made a few years ago. It starts Several years ago, uh, yeah. Stanley Tucci and uh, Tony uh, Shaloub. 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 And they, it's a story about them trying to make a go of it in this restaurant, and they're not doing very well. They're on the Jersey Shore. They're on the Jersey be, Shore. It has a little poignance now with all this happening on the Jersey Shore. Yes. And they invite Louis Prima, who was at that time, uh, you know, he's a very... And they're going to cook them this wonderful dinner, uh, and they the whole the whole movie is about about this. One of the reasons why we know about this, we saw it, but uh, our son uh, works in the movies and does special effects, and he worked on this. This movie. is one of several that he's worked on, but it's one of his favorites. Right, and they the main dish is called a timbale, timbalo, which is comes from Sicily, and it's it's a, a process that takes two days to make. I'm not going to give it, you that recipe. That is very difficult, and it ends up looking like a drum, really. So it had poignance because Louis Prima was a drummer. So. Right, that was the connection. Or, right. Or he, I mean, he, he, it was. Yeah, I yeah. don't know if he was a drummer, but he something like that. No, he was a he played a trumpet. Played a trumpet. Well, whatever. Yeah, he played his trumpet. So, anyways, uh, let me give you a recipe for a the steak that uh, actually the recipe comes from Tucci. And it was he did this on in the movie, and it's a very very easy recipe to 
to do, uh, and you're going to take a flank steak. Flank steaks are very, very good. There's not, a, there's not a lot of fat on them. You don't have to cook them long, as it'll be pointed out in this recipe, and it's easy to do. This one is really simple to do. You're going to saute some butter and uh, olive oil, and you're going to season a, uh, a flank steak. Now make sure, and I've said this before, you want that flank steak to, to be out on the counter for a while to room temperature before you cook it. And you're going to cook it three minutes per side, and then you're going to add one half a cup of red wine and a teaspoon of that, you know, that oregano I shook on top? Well, we're going to shake some more of that on top. And we're going to cook it for an additional minute, take it off of the burner, let it set uh, for about 10 minutes, slice it, and serve it with sliced uh, potatoes, as a, a bed of sliced potatoes. And the bed of sliced potatoes is you're going to heat some olive oil and butter, and you're going to saute it in uh, sliced potatoes in a pan. You're going to season it. You're going to cook it for 10 minutes. You're going to stick it in the oven again, broil the top, or bake the top. It doesn't make it, if you broil the top, uh, it's a little shorter time. Put those down. Put the. I keep hitting this thing. Uh, <laughs> I talk with my hands a lot, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, uh, put the steak on top with a nice, wonderful red wine sauce over the top of it. Another wonderful dish. Another wonderful and, dish. Uh, you notice that all these dishes are very easy and quick, which is, you know, as we're getting older, we don't go into long cooking processes unless you're roasting a, something. That's but, right. Uh, it's something that you can do last minute and have your a wonderful meal. You know, and we're talking about uh, some, some of these restaurants uh, that we've gone to. Uh, in portions of Italy, and some and, and Naples, I think is the big place, Marilyn. Uh, they consider uh, it a, a character flaw if you go out to eat. Right. They think that they sh you should eat at home. Right. And that only their particular food is any good. Yeah, there's but nothing that, that can the, come the, up. Nothing with can it. compare to what they do. But you know, takes it, all kinds. But it's fun to go out to eat. Right. Right. But I, we, Jim and I love going out to eat. It is fun. Yep. And, you know, you taste things that you wouldn't normally cook, too. So. Now, I want to finish off with a recipe for a panna cotta. Panna cotta is basically cooked cream. This is something we, I learned in Italy by traveling through. I had never heard of it. The only uh, cream kind of dish or something like that was creme brulee. And I, I had eaten that, and I had never heard of panna cotta. And I, boy, did I fall in love with panna cotta. I think it's better than creme brulee. But <laughs> yeah. And we don't eat a lot of desserts, and I don't cook a lot of desserts because right. I, I hate, like, I don't like being precise. And with, with he doesn't with, like to bake per I don't se. Like to bake, bake right. is baking is a science. Cooking is an art. Right. <laughs> Shall we put it that way? So here's a recipe for panna cotta, where you're taking one quarter cup of uh, heavy cream, and you're going to sprinkle it with one and three quarters teaspoons of gelatin. Let's set that aside. Then you're going to heat a quarter cup of milk. You're going to put a half a teaspoon of vanilla in it. And then you're going to add three tablespoons of agave, which is a uh, from the agave plant. It's a right. sweetener. It's a sweetener, yes. And uh, and another, it's a substitute for for it's it's, it's a, the new uh, substitute sweetener, which is a stevia comes from the stevia plant. Stevia it, plant. A stevia sweetener. I think there's some uh, names, right. you know, commercial names, but basically that's what it is. Yes. And it's, so that's going to cut down on the calories of the thing. You're going to, you're going to mix your, your cream mixture in it. You're going to add, now this is a, a wonderful little add-on to the thing. You're going to add one and a half cups of Greek yogurt. Remember we used it before. Going to mix that in. We're going to put it into little serving bowls, put it in the fridge overnight, and it's going to come out. It's going to set up. You can put a little strawberry over the top. You can put a little fruit on uh, it. it we're, well, we're in strawberry season, and there'll be more berries coming along. So this is a lovely time to do this right. because you can use any single berry or combination of berries, and they taste wonderful over something like this. It's like having strawberries and cream. Absolutely. So, 
So we, uh, we're going to get to the uh, Cipino, a different kind of Cipino, uh, which comes out of the middle of, of Italy, which is going to have some beans and, and, uh, and some uh, shrimp in it. Uh, but we're going to hold on to that next week. Next week, we're going we're gonna to be talking about, you know, we're into the spring of the year. Where the markets, all the farm markets are opening up. And we're going to be talking about the farm markets, what, uh, what to, to get at a farm market. Surely a lot better getting local produce and fixing it up. It's fresh. It's inexpensive. We're going to be talking about that. And, Marilyn, we're going to be talking about street food. Right. But the, our local um, farmer's market right here down in the park in Seneca Falls near the canal starts this coming Wednesday yep. and you can begin to go shopping at the market and coming up with those dishes like we talked about at that restaurant that are freshly grown here so I mean I would imagine peas would be coming out yes. I don't know if the asparagus season's over but there might be some asparagus, asparagus you would be, be getting into beans and all those kinds of things so if you go and find all this fresh produce you can always come up as spinach is this time of year uh, you can come up with these wonderful dishes. A little olive oil and garlic goes a long way with any of them. <laughs> it really works. Those saute pans work. And you can come up with some wonderful dishes. You can use them over pasta. There's all kinds of things you can do with these wonderful Well, we're going we're to we're gonna make a primavera sauce, which right. is nothing more than right. wonderful fresh, fresh uh, vegetables. So we encourage you to do farmer's markets. There's several farmer's markets around. It isn't only in Seneca Falls. There's Waterloo. There's Geneva. I think there's one out at the wineries on Friday. There's that wine, winery on 5 and 20. Um, there's the one in Ithaca. There's one in Ithaca. I mean, you can be traveling the streets Geneva, uh, yeah. all over around here and find farmer's markets and, or, or little stands right. by, by these farms. And they have wonderful kinds of things to eat. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to go to street food, and we're going to be talking about street food, and, we'll, and we're going to be cooking chicken on a stick uh, in a pita bread. So, right. or, or some kind of wrapper. I'm not sure what kind of wrapper we are. We're going to do that next time, okay? We had a great time with you. We hope you enjoyed. This weather's going to warm up, I promise you. You're going to be able to get outside and grill. You're going to be able to start your garden and get that going well. Things are going to start growing. Do you I have hope. any suggestions of what you would like us to review or find a recipe for? We would be glad to do that for you. And uh, Yep, so... Enjoy. Have a good good time. We'll see you again uh, in a couple of weeks. Ciao. Ciao.